We are at about 5,600 meters right now. That road there, it's going up to Nlingla. That's the highest motorable pass in the whole world. 19,000 feet. Do you think the Americans are going to make it up there? Welcome everyone to India, land of diversity, of mystery, and of course, the mighty Tuk Tuk. Team CTXP has come halfway around the globe on a very important mission. Harry couldn't make it, which is why I am here with Zach, and our challenge is to ride motorcycles to the highest road in the world. That means we'll be traveling over a thousand miles through the Himalaya mountains to elevations over 19,000 feet. Now, there are millions and millions of motorcycles in India, and a couple of them are pretty obvious choices for this mission. But the reason that we are in Delhi is we are after two motorcycles in particular, and there's only one place we can get them. While Triumph is headquartered in England, their bikes are manufactured and assembled all over the world. The ones we wanted are built in India, which is why we had to go straight to the source. This looks promising. Mm-hmm. Okie doke, team. So this uh, might look like <clears throat> just boxes with uh, motorcycles in them in a very humid warehouse. But actually, this is the culmination of many, many months of emails and work with uh, the folks at Triumph. If the boxes are to be believed, inside we have Triumph's all new single cylinder Speed 400 and Scrambler 400X. That is it. Yeehaw. Well, that is pretty. That's much bigger than I was expecting. Yeah, seriously. These bikes aren't available to people yet. They will be eventually available globally, but even in India, where the bikes are made, the Speed 400 has only just been released, and the Scrambler 400X uh, is still unreleased. In fact, this is a prototype pre-production bike that... We had asked very, very nicely for Triumph <laughs> to let us use one of these. So this is a new motorcycle, a new platform, a new engine, what better way to test a new model line but to try to take it to the highest road in the world? I'm just hoping it's gonna be cooler because I am sweating like a fiend. <laughs> Since he was in the market for coolness, Spurgeon chose the cafe racer styled Speed 400. That left me to ride the Scrambler. Not so bad, considering it comes with a larger 19-inch front wheel, more suspension travel, a skid plate, and dirt-curious tires. Plus, guards for the headlight, radiator, and my precious hands. I had only one concern. You have a tapered bar and I don't? Oh, because mine's braced. You're a dirt bike. You're a dirt biker, man. <laughs> dirt bike. Yeah. My bar is thicker in the middle, and it tapers down to a skinnier 7 8 of an inch on the outside, whereas Zach just has a tiny little 7 8 inch bar. Not about how thick your bar is. It sounds like, uh, it sounds like something a guy with a skinny bar would say. <laughs> in an effort to keep Ari uh, close to our hearts, as well as present on a CTXP episode, we have made this little bobblehead figurine. And as far as my mechanical prowess goes, I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to use zip ties to get Ari to uh, stay on the back of my motorcycle. So I think that speaks volumes to the uh, potential failure uh, that could be awaiting Zach and I should anything go uh, mechanically awry.
The next morning, we returned to Triumph, finally ready to saddle up and head north. The bikes and our britches would never be this clean again. Umling La or bust. We're coming for you, Himalayas. Okay, buddy. This is uh it's gonna be eye-opening for us. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look right, ride left, look right, ride left, right? Look right, ride left. <laughs> <laughs> We began our journey in Gurugram, a business district just south of Delhi. And our plan for the first day of riding was to make it to the mountain town of Mandi, approximately 300 miles to the north. The first hurdle was simply getting out of the city. We got a lot to get used to, buddy. Riding on the left side of the road, which is weird for us Americans. And then there's cows pretty much everywhere. And there's people everywhere, pedestrians everywhere. Oh my god. I was looking at a cow and I didn't see that there's a giant pile of concrete in the middle of the road. That's probably going to be a theme. I will say that I feel like I'm bottoming out the rear shock pretty good <laughs> with my uh, packing job and my American girth. Well, can I, can I just interrupt you to say this for a moment? Uh, please, please do. You look fantastic. <laughs> It took us almost six hours to escape the urban chokehold of Delhi. It was slow going and brutally hot, but it was a good chance to get familiar with the bikes. Plus, Bobblehead Airy was having a great time. After stuffing our faces with Paratha at the world famous Amrik Sukhdev, we got back on the road and finally got a break from the heat. But unfortunately, not the humidity. It started raining. The, the problem is the water just keeps rising. There's not much drainage to the rain. But we're in the way of traffic and uh, we can get out of the rain somehow. So. We wandered around looking for shelter, but it turned out that getting wet wasn't our biggest problem. We were told that if we didn't make it past the town of Mandy by tonight, the roads we needed to access the Himalayas might wash away completely, and our trip would be over. We were originally planning on stopping at Mandy tonight, which is about how far away? Three hours away, something like that. Three hours away, which would have been doable. But then, uh, because there's supposed to be rain tomorrow, we're trying to figure out if we should push through to Manali, which is... Eight hours away? Eight hours away, which means that we could potentially be riding... You call about midnight in some darkness. One other situation report we need to make you aware of is that we lost Bobblehead Airy. And that is very sad. A bobblehead airy, just like real life airy, I'm sure would want us to continue on. In the time it took us to wring out our gloves and say a prayer for bobblehead airy, the storm had passed and we were back on the road. If nothing else, Spurgeon was really getting the hang of traffic in India. Some sort of gateway here. National Highway Authority of India welcomes you. Tunnel number one, length 1,800 meters. Holy Moses. This is probably the scariest tunnel that I have ever been in. <laughs> it's just like hazy with dust, and all you can see is lights and shapes. I'm having a hard time seeing. I'm having a hard time breathing. I think I'm chewing on sand. There's the end. Oh, right, here we go. Oh, dude, look at this. This is absolutely freaking gorgeous. 
yeah, it's uh, it's very severe, but also lush. Hey, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Okie dokie. Maybe don't look so much at the scenery. <laughs> Zach and I were just talking about how nice it is and how the weather had turned around and for as crazy of a day that we had, the rain had stopped and we were just in for a nice easy ride. Famous last words. It's uh, what, like nine o'clock at night, and we've been riding since six o'clock this morning. Yep, and we have covered an amazingly short amount of distance, not for lack of trying, but because average speeds on road trips in India are evidently pretty low. We thought we might be able to beat the system, but you just can't do it. Yeah, we were supposed to, I mean, we should be pulling into our stopping point in about an hour, um, but we're gonna have to keep going for fear of the road being closed. So that's adding uh, an extra four and a half hours onto our ride into the evening. So we probably won't get to our hotel until around 1 a.m. at this point. Woe is us. I'm gonna fall asleep so easily tonight. Oh my God. This main road is closed. Okay. There's a landslide ahead. Ah. There's a huge traffic jam. They say you won't reach till the morning. Okay. So there's another route which goes up and then goes down. Now so they got information from that. Okay. So that's the key. Okay. We are still going to keep going. We are just going to go to a long cut as opposed to the shortcut. So at this point, we, we probably won't get there until he, did, he didn't he didn't say. We we got to keep going. Our first day on the road was about to become our second day on the road. It seemed like our best option for avoiding a permanent road closure was to ride overnight and reroute through the mountains. A brilliant idea shared by every other driver trying to get to Manali. I don't, what, I don't know what time is anymore. Or I, don't, I, I genuinely don't know what time it is. I think I might just go to sleep right here. No one's ever been hurt from laying down in a road in India before, have they? Ugh. With traffic in front of us and behind us, our only option was to sit in line and wait through the night. Being soaked or jet lagged or not sleeping would each be good reasons to be fed up with the situation. We were all of those things, and the adrenaline of starting the trip had fully worn off. It's five o'clock in the morning. The morning after, we were supposed to have arrived to the place that we are not to yet. We are extremely behind schedule and extremely tired. It is a uh, little after 7 a.m. which means that uh, we have been officially riding for 24 hours or over 24 hours. Uh, Zach, however, informs me that that doesn't count as 24 hours. It's actually more riding. I think 25 hours straight of riding <laughs> counts as more than one day of riding. Yeah, that's all. That's all I mean. So yeah, day one in the books, easy peasy. We're just getting a quick bite to eat and then we will hit the road again and uh, <laughs> we'll sleep when we're dead.
After a luxurious four hours of sleep, we got back into our damp gear and settled up to keep climbing. Our next stop, the town of Jispa, was only 60 miles out. But we had learned the hard way that distance doesn't tell the whole story when riding in India. We are proper socked in. We should be a pro. Yeah, there it is. There we go. The Atel Tunnel. This tunnel is the longest single tube tunnel in the world at almost five and a half miles. Five and a half miles burrowed straight through the Himalayas. It's pretty impressive. Do you ever do the thing where you try to hold your breath through a tunnel? <laughs> yeah, I remember doing that as a little kid. And it would be inadvisable, I would say, for this tunnel. Apparently, some people refer to it as a, a portal, not just a tunnel, because when you come out the other side, the weather, the scenery, it all looks completely different. It really is absolutely breathtaking. I mean, the other side was pretty, but this is just wow. All right, 17 inch rims, rubbery foot pegs, washed out road, what could go wrong? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's, oh, look at that. Nice, man. You just, you just motored it. <laughs> that puddle just got scrambled. Woo! <laughs> All right. Back on pavement and a sunset to ride into. Life's good, Spurjo. Life's good. How am I feeling? That's what the director wants to know. You gotta be feeling I, pretty good. I feel, I mean, we, we got, we finally got uh, more than three hours of sleep. We got almost six and a half hours of sleep last <laughs> night. And we went to sleep in the nighttime and woke up in the daytime, which was always nice. We really, we're crushing it over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, today, CTX peers, we dive into the heart of the Himalayas. And we head through Shingo La, a pass of nearly 16 and a half thousand feet. We hope our lungs survive. And if we do, we'll make it to the town of Padum for the night. And uh, I guess I don't have anything else to say about it, except I'm looking forward to it. We have about 140 kilometers to go, which means it'll take us about uh, 13 hours to get there. <laughs> Rather than take the highway to our next major city, we opted for the road less traveled. A route through the first of many tall mountain passes, long stretches without pavement, and some questionable road conditions. Okay, we're climbing, Spurge. The, uh, the altitude is definitely starting to affect the performance of our engines here. For sure, the, the bikes are, uh, are starting to suck wind a little bit, which is fair because the altimeter on my bar here uh, has about 15,000 feet right now. 
which is the highest I have ever been. I've, by, I think before this, like 13.9 and change was, was my previous record. So I'm beating records here. It's getting real, you might say. And I mean, we're climbing fast, going back and forth through these switchbacks. It's, uh, it's pretty cool, Spurge. This is pretty cool. God, look at those mountains over there, man. Holy cow. It's hard to focus on the road is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is actually. I wish Bobblehead Harry was here to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little guy. I say we pull over and take this in for just a minute. The thin air was sapping the bike's power and our strength, but we had made it to the top of our first pass higher than we'd ever been. Even in the late summer, snow-capped peaks towered in every direction, feeding streams and rivers that flow across the entire country, including some of their roads. We're in straight up uh, glacier runoff river valley, it seems, huh? Looks like we're gonna have to go through some of this water. Oh, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Slipped on a rock. Wow. So would you call this a river or a road or both? Oh, this is the road. <laughs> kind of hard to tell the difference. This is uh, a bad display of infrastructure, but it's pretty cool adventure riding. Oh, man. Oh, oh my god. Be honest, are you jealous of my scrambler? I'm a little bit jealous of your uh, chassis position and your ability to be able to stand up easier. Oh my God, it's not over. Oh man. This looks really fast moving. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Just going for it. Just going for it. Ah. 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 <laughs> that was awesome. These bikes are proven to be little champions. An incredible day so far. We've boarded rivers, we've enjoyed scenery, and we just had a fantastic meal, and the bikes are doing great. What more could you ask for? There's not a lot more that could go right, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> uh, about 50 kilometers to go, we think, um, down out of this valley following the river, and then, yeah, we'll go over another little pass and on to the town of Padum, and hopefully, day three success. Considering how much we struggled on the pavement getting to the mountains, it came as a welcome surprise that our first day of riding these machines off the beaten path was a success. We still hit the occasional delay, but there was no denying that things were looking up for Team CTXP and the Tiny Triumphs. Is absolutely gorgeous. That's Padum Sunset for you. We've arrived. Another 100 miles in the books. Through a big pass, many a water crossing, many a bumpy road, a couple obstacles. Altogether a great day. But uh, I think if anything, we are ready for some food at this point. Food, sleep, do it again tomorrow. Hot darn. The plan the next day was to ride from our lovely little hotel in Padum through the Zanskar Valley on a road that had just been completed. We hoped. It was supposed to be our longest day riding in the dirt, and we had been warned. It might be a tough one. So Zach and I were having a lovely dinner last night. We pulled out the map, and it turns out that the ride is twice as long as the ride we did yesterday. And when we started talking to people 
at the dinner table, they looked at us like we were crazy because apparently the road gets, uh, what was the word? Terrible? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one German lady laughed at us. She said, I've never been that way, but I've heard it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so that is what we have in store for us today. It's uh, a little hard to imagine being twice as tired tonight as we were last night, but uh, that's what we've got ahead of us. And there's nothing to do but tackle it, yeah? Ah, uh, we gotta burn some miles, so wish us luck. Let us ride. It didn't take long for the pavement to disappear. But the road conditions didn't seem any worse than what we had already been through. The route was a work in progress, but it was working. For the most part. Trials and tribulations of uh, travel on these roads that are very much under construction. We're gonna have to jump the bikes up over that dirt berm. Yeah, yeah, that's scrambler territory if I've ever seen it. After navigating a few delays, we settled into a groove and found ourselves on some of the most incredible roads we have seen anywhere in the world. The Zanskar Valley is a type of place that truly defies words. So severe and massive and empty it feels like a different planet. Maybe that's why people told us the road was terrible. To protect this special place for just a little bit longer. The Spurginator and I are making great time after that uh, Indiana Jones off-road section. <laughs> we're, uh, <laughs> we're back on the straight and narrow. We're just on the outskirts of where we're gonna stop tonight but we're feeling frisky. We might just push on, yeah? We're just gonna ride to the town of uh, Neoma. We will then be at a position tomorrow morning where we can ride to the highest road in the world, which means our mission will be complete and we'll be higher than we've ever been before. So to speak, of course. So yeah, this is the final fuel stop before the highest road in the world. We're full up, we're at sort of a fork in the road here. And as long as the crew is okay with it. We're going <laughs> to make sure we have enough supplies and we're going to push on to Neoma, which will be base camp for our trek to the top of the world. Drifting into the town of Neoma. The altimeter is reading right around 14,000 feet. We weren't able to find a hotel in town, but we were able to rent a house, and now we're just trying to find it. I think we might have passed it. Um, Did we? Yeah, I think for what it's worth, we, uh, we went to too far, so we should probably turn around. Okay. Is this it? No, I think it's down here. I think it's down here. Down there? Yeah. It's a. Uh, I think it's a sign with the guest house. Okay. Is that our host? So this must be it. Is it okay to park the bikes back here? We can bring the motorcycles around here. Okay. 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 Cool, thank you. Hello. Hello. This one? This one here? Thank you, thank you. Thank you. We are what I feel like is pretty obviously tired. <laughs> um, 
but also, dare I say, satisfied after a good day of riding. It was a great day of riding. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we crushed a lot of miles and we, uh, we had fun. We did not make it here before dark, in case <laughs> you didn't notice that. But um, the good news is it's not crazy late because it turns out the town closest to the highest motorable road in the world, Umling La, um, foreigners are not allowed to stay there. And we are very much, if nothing else, foreigners. So we have to stay here in lovely Nioma, which has been great so far, but it is farther away. And that means we head out to the top of the world at 6 a.m. And we're tired and we're hungry. So it's time to get the cameras out of the room so that we can eat and sleep. Now, goodbye. Go. <laughs> Sun is bright. Crispy morning at 14,000 feet. I would say this is the coldest start we've had yet. It's almost welcome to not be sweating immediately. <laughs> The valley that Zach and I are cruising through right now is pretty much at the same level as the tallest peaks in the continental US. How are you feeling, Spurge? I, I had a hard time sleeping last night, if I'm being honest. And when we woke up this morning, it was just, you felt like a little kid on Christmas morning. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna do it. Whew. How about yourself? I, uh, I don't know if I share the sense of accomplishment quite. I'm still a little bit nervous that, you know, something stops us short of achieving the, the ultimate goal here, but you can't say it's not exciting. Because Umling La and the Ladakh region share a border with China, there is a huge military presence. Geopolitically, it's a little tense, and there's a general feeling that travelers should tread lightly. Luckily, we got through without any issues. And before long, we had a decision to make. So we have arrived in Hanlei, and we've reached a literal fork in the road. If you notice the sign behind me, it says that this is the way to Umling La. However, we were actually talking to another rider here, and he was letting us know that there is an alternate route that goes a yonder. Mm -hmm. Correct, Mundo, which makes it a figurative fork in the road as well, right? You got uh, 90 to 100 kilometers that away, paved to Umling La. You got 70 or 80 kilometers that way, dirt to Umling La. And that makes it a dirt road shortcut. And at CTXP, we are contractually obligated to take every dirt road shortcut because it is often fun or just the right amount of disaster. We don't have a choice. Right. But these bikes have already proven themselves, so we know that they're gonna handle this with ease. I'm pretty excited. I think that we're doing okay. So let's go have some fun. <laughs> Washboard, the international symbol of riding on a dirt road. <laughs> the suspension is working on this bike. Yeah. Oh. Not that hard to overwhelm it. One, two, three. A Himalayan triumph of epic proportions. Climbing, Spurge, we're climbing up above this valley. 
Oh, oh, soft, soft, soft. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that is a weird material. What is that? <laughs> it's like moon dust. <laughs> it is. Oh, oh, oh. My dust. Our dirt shortcut was a dusty, messy success. But as the air got thinner, we started to feel the weight of this destination. We were approaching the border of the two most populous countries in the world. And what we found was almost complete nothingness. We felt like tiny visitors to a huge place. And Mother Nature had one more message to make us feel small. Well, India had to give it to us one last time. Only lot. Would let us get to the top without snow, sleet, rain. That's <laughs> a little element of all of that mixed together. Quite a welcome to the world's highest road. It's uh, definitely turning to snow. Okay, kids, we are in a full on sleet storm snow flurry, whatever. And we are passing all sorts of very encouraging signs which say stuff like, you are now higher than Everest Base Camp. Months to get to this point. Passports that were expired, visas that were denied, <laughs> flights that were almost missed. It took us so much to get here. It was 19,000 miles, 19,000 minutes uh, <laughs> to hit 19,000 feet. Certainly feels <laughs> like it, doesn't it? Dude, look at those mountains peeking over the top. Holy cow. That is way too cool. Oh, <laughs> oh look at that. Oh, woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> The things you can do on a motorcycle, the places it can take you. The adventures you can have, the friends you can make. The feelings you oh, can feel. The feelings you can feel. <laughs> I see it. It's up ahead. There it is. <laughs> oh. Bro welcomes you. The highest motorable pass in the world. <laughs> Give me a bump, man. Oh, dude. Nicely done. <laughs> there are certain experiences in one's life that take your breath away. And I think this is one of them. And I think the reason that our breath is gone is probably pretty obvious. <laughs> nice job, buddy. Good ride. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I don't even care that I don't even care that I'm cold. <laughs> if we taught the world nothing about Triumph's new 400cc platform, we taught them that it can go to 19,000 feet if they want. There you go. If there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> oh. Triumph's new singles probably weren't designed to reach for snowy peaks or ride through rivers. But hopefully now, after a trip through the most famous mountain range in the world, nobody will need to wonder if they could. 
for most of this adventure, we were worried about our own limitations. Learning to navigate traffic in India. Trying to breathe at 15 or 20,000 feet. Even just finding a place to sleep was occasionally a challenge. Still, there's nothing better than tackling a bucket list motorcycle adventure. It can make you feel like you're on top of the world. And this time, we actually were. Hey there, Common Trade Experts, Zach and Spurge here with a quick reminder of the sponsor of this video, which is quite simple. It's just the YouTube channel that you're watching. Revzilla produces these videos to entertain, but to also inspire you to perhaps get out and take a motorcycle road trip of your own. So the next time you need a helmet, a jacket, a pair of gloves, or some tires for your road trip, just remember that a little bit of the money that you spend on those products goes to producing content like this. Something you can keep in mind, we hope, next time you need something for you or your bike. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.